Hey everyone, it's Old Man Banjo here with a quick video coming to you today because those dudes at Hello Games have done what they have consistently managed to do over the past eight years since the launch of No Man's Sky 2. I think we all remember what the launch of No Man's Sky was like. Surprise us by improving the game. And they're once again doing that on the 17th of July 2024 with the release of Patch 5.0. So patch 5.0 adds a lot. I'm not going to be talking about the gameplay additions because I really need to catch up, up on a lot of the content they've added to No Man's Sky over the past two years. That's kind of when I stopped really grinding the game out and exploring everything that it has to offer. But I wanted to talk about the bit of this 5.0 update that to me is by far the most important, and that is the graphical and world rendering updates. If you've been following the game for a long time, you'll know, I can't remember how long ago it was. I think it was four to five years now. Um, the game went through a massive overhaul on the way planets and systems were rendered. Some people liked the old way, some people preferred the new, but, you know, like it or leave it, the game got updated. Now, today, we're getting with the 5.0 launch a completely new way of rendering a lot of the planets, and I'm going to go through uh, those effects with you today, show you some footage from their own trailer, some from my gameplay, and uh, talk about the new edition, Snow Man's Sky, in 5.0. So while this is not a complete rehaul of the way planets were generated, like the one we got back um, a few years ago, this one is more of a graphical improvement, but by God, is it a huge graphical improvement. The first thing on the list to patch notes is sky and cloud re-rendering. The atmospheric and volumetric cloud rendering system has been completely rewritten for vastly increased detail and definition. Planets now exhibit a greater range of cloud coverage over time, from planet to planet, and in response to weather conditions. I can confirm this really does work. I hope I have footage of it now if I can find a good planet for it. It really does look a lot better. Cloud coverage on planets before this used to be kind of similar across all of the same type of planets, whereas now it feels very much like there's a lot of dynamic weather. They go on to say uh, planets will uh, planets with rain will no longer use the ambient rain effect when cloud coverage is insufficient. That for me was really immersion breaking when you land on a planet and that planet had, was generated with rain even though there were no clouds for the rain to come from. That's gone. Um, daytime sky colors are now significantly more varied, which is super cool. It was weird to be on a planet with a blue, you know, nitrogen style atmosphere when it was clearly full of like toxic gases planets now seem to have like consistent uh sky and cloud rendering that makes sense with the composition of the planet and uh they've got new varying uh nighttime darkness levels that vary from planet to planet with the kind of ambient lighting on that planet and uh i think the planet's distance from the sun is part of that now as well or at least that seems to be my experience so far another huge improvement they've made is the water rendering water rendering has been completely overhauled and now uses a mesh based system that allows for true wave and foam generation water conditions vary over time in response to both local weather and the depth of the water in any particular loca location this really looks good in game it's it it is it makes uh exploring large water based planets completely much more interesting looking than before whereas before you would see this like undynamic water just across most of the surface of the planet and you would dive below and you would find interesting stuff now you can kind of look at the planet from the surface and it looks dynamic it looks interesting Water now reflects the sun and features ambient planetary reflections for dramatically increased visual quality. Water color variety has been significantly increased. Both of these do basically what I was saying before. The water now feels gelled into the atmosphere of the planet as opposed to just having a planet that's kind of coated in this generic water and then you have to dive through it to find any of the interesting flora and fauna below. Uh, it makes water-based planets much less immersion breaking. Uh, bases with glass now accurately render the water conditions outside. Uh, I need to make an underwater base to test this out. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I'm I'm sure underwater bases are going to look significantly better. Um, starships can now be fitted with aquatic landing jets, allowing them to land or be summoned just above the surface of the ocean. Need to add that to my ship. That's super cool. Um, a biological equivalent of this technology has been added for living ships. I never had got my living ship. I need to do that as well. Uh, general engine improvements. The shadow rendering system has been reworked to take advantage of screen space shadowing techniques, resulting in more richly lit planets and more accurate and more detailed shadows. This is a huge upgrade. It feels a lot better to me, especially on planets with really, really dense flora and fauna and a harsh light. It, 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 really, it really looks a lot better. 
Distant planetary objects now look slightly more detailed and realistic. Uh, I need to test this on maximum settings. I think it looks better, but I've always, I still have, and this could be that my system is far from top of the line. I still have some kind of load in, load out stuff with objects that are distant. Um, can't tell, probably need a better system than me. Terrain generation has been rewritten to incorporate dual marching cube voxel meshing, which reduces vertex count, increases ch terrain generation speed, improves frame rate, and saves significant amounts of memory. I've seen a huge improvement. So one of the things that, while I respect uh, Hello Games for their constant updates to the game, one of the things that has, I know, caused some uh, consternation amongst the uh, community is that some of the updates, especially the ones that have improved graphical fidelity in the past, also seem to really up the uh, system requirements, whereas this is a big win for lowering system requirements. I really feel the game is running m substantially better for me than it was before this update. Uh, I would need to do a comparison between the two, but I feel just anecdotally like I'm getting an extra like 10 frames per second. Networking systems have been, have been improved for reduced bandwidth usage. Could be useful for you. I mean, most people probably have good enough bandwidth to play this game, but maybe less lag when you go into the Omega Station. Uh, significant memory and performance optimizations have been made across the entire game, particularly in metadata usage, texture streaming, LOD generation, and procedural mesh generation. Again, I'm still getting a little bit of pop in and out as I come down to planets. It's improved, I think, but again, you might need a little bit better of a system than me to completely get all of the LOD generation and texture streaming issues out of the way. Also, when I was playing a game, I was recording everything. So you have to take that into account, you know, uh, problems with being a YouTuber, first world problems. Uh, planetary variety and diversity has been increased all across the universe. New frozen, lush, desert, scorched, radioactive, and toxic worlds await discovery and exploration. I've seen a few of those. Now they look really, really great. Uh, and the interaction between the flora and the fauna on those planets is better than it was before. Underlying terrain shapes have not been reset and existing planetary bases will not be moved. I think that's a good choice on their part. I think if you had changed the uh, terrain shapes and made people remake their bases eight years into the game now I, I can't remember the last time they did a reset like that i think it was i want to say it was five years ago it's too late into the game i know I, I wouldn't support that overall overall really really good changes to planetary variety the explanation hello games gave when they announced this was that this is technology from their new and upcoming game and uh they're just taking the time and porting it now back to No Man's Sky, which it just shows um, how great a company they are that they're taking the time to actually do that. When really, by all means, you know, it's been eight years, they've done numerous, numerous updates for this game, and they definitely did not need to put in this amount of work. They're definitely not going to financially recoup off new sales of No Man's Sky because of this graphics update, the amount of labor that they would have put into doing it. I think they just did it out of love and trying to get the game to where they envisioned it eight years ago. And I think it's it's pretty well near there now. I'm going to definitely go back, play the game a little bit, and just enjoy how cool these new planets look. I feel like this is the game at its really peak peak generative planetness, which is what I really enjoyed about the game. And with that, I should say goodbye. This video has gone on a lot longer than I thought it was going to. The list of changes is actually really, really substantial. I haven't even covered about half of it here. If you want, check it out for yourself on the No Man's Sky website. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more gaming and entertainment news, reviews, and commentary. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.